If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Welcome to Learn JMeter series. In this season 3, episode 2, we are going to see about uniform random timer. Before we see the specifics about the timers, first you have to understand what are timers and why we need timers and how it works. If you are coming from load runner world, you would know the term called think time. Think time is nothing but the delay between the requests or the transactions which will help you to mimic the real world scenario. It doesn't mean you have the tool and the licenses or the resources so that I can just inject the load whatever I want. No, it doesn't work like that. Of course, it is a type of testing but your objective should be mimicking the real world scenario. Assume that uh, you have a form in your web application and uh, you are able to complete that web form in 5 seconds. But the same web form will be uh, completed by other user in 8 seconds or 10 seconds. So these timers will inject the delay in your test plan and it will help you to mimic the real world scenario. How timer works in JMeter is a little bit different from how it works in load runner because the timers in JMeter works based on the scope. So timers always processed before each sampler in the scope. Assume that you have a timer at the end of your test plan. It doesn't mean that uh, it will execute before the script completion. No. So it will execute before the each sampler in the scope. So here uh, I have the simple test plan with two requests, request one and request two, and I have a timer, uniform random timer to the attached to the third group. So in this case, the first element it will execute is the uniform random timer. Then it will execute request one. Then it will execute the timer again. Then it will execute request two at the last. So this is how it works in JMeter. You have to understand the scope of your element and the order of the execution. So I'm going to put up a different uh, two videos about this order of execution and scoping rules. But timers will always takes the higher priority when it comes to the execution. Then only it will uh, go with the other elements. And there is a configuration called timer.factor. So this configuration is uh, commented out by default in JMeter. So if you go to jmeter.properties file, you can see this uh, configuration. So basically it will, you can influence the factor of the timers. So if it is 1.0f, which means uh, it will just go by the one fold. If it is a 2.0 means it will take the two fold of the uh, uh, default timer. So which we are going to see it in a demo. And there are different types of timers available in JMeter. There are totally nine timers. We are not going to see everything. We will touch base the mandatory or frequently used timers so that it will be very helpful whenever you are in working in the JMeter project. So now it's time for a quick demo. We will see how you can use the uniform random timer and we can see the timer factor configuration. This is my sample JMeter test plan where I have added only one HTTP request. Actually, it's a dummy sampler, request one. And to add the timer to this particular uh, dummy sampler, you have to right click on it, go to add timer and select uniform random timer. This uniform random timer has two parameters you have to configure. One is the random delay maximum in milliseconds. And another configuration is constant delay offset. So this random delay maximum is the maximum delay it can inject randomly. So assume that I'm going to configure uh, three seconds. So it will take random delay at the max of three seconds. And the constant delay offset is zero by default, but uh, you can configure the constant delay. In this case, I'm going with uh, one second. So the total delay will be random delay maximum plus constant delay. So probably it could be more, uh, not more than four seconds. So now let me execute this uh, script. So we have to watch this timer here at the top right so that you can see the delay. 
and uh, I'm going to click on run now. So this time it is uh, it is executed within uh, I think two seconds and I'm going to clear this uh, log and I'm going to click on run and now you can see the timer is running one two again and let me uh, hit the run button again. So this time it uh, took three seconds. So the total delay would be random delay maximum plus the constant delay. So this is the purpose of a uniform random timer. But now I'm going to add another uh, request, say request two, and I'm going to delete the random timer here from request one, and I'm going to delete the random timer from request two. Now I'm going to add the timer under thread group. So now what will happen is first it will inject the delay, then it will execute request one, then again delay will be injected and again request two. So this is how it works. We will see whether it is working fine or not. So let us configure the random maximum say three seconds. I'm not going to configure the constant delay. So let us uh, execute this. So the first request it executed very quickly and the second request it took a uh, one second delay. Let us execute again. So this time it is taking uh, two seconds for the first request and again two seconds for the second request. Because the timers always takes a uh, higher priority, then it will execute the samplers. Now let us see the uh, configuration factor. So if you go to uh, jmeter.properties, uh, and if you uh, just do a quick search called think time, you will get this uh, think time configuration. So by default, it is commented out. So what uh, you can do is just uh, copy the whole section and go to user.properties. And at the end of the uh, user.properties, just paste it and you can uh, enable the factor. So right now, the timer.factor is uh, 2.0f. And if you hit save, and if you uh, restart your jmeter the new properties will be picked up and it will be the factor will be two times of this value so basically uh, it will take it will multiply by two and then uh, you can uh, inject the delay twice than the default one so th that is the purpose of this timer dot factor so let us uh, restart the jmeter okay now let us execute the script so in this case it would be maximum of six seconds so let us uh, validate that by clicking on this uh, run button you can see the timer one two three four five six so within six seconds it executed the first request and the second request it went uh, immediately but we can validate again by clicking on the run button the first request it is taking around uh, four seconds and the second request is uh, two seconds let us uh, try again so you can play around with this uh, timer.factor and with the uniform random timer, you will understand how it works. So that's it guys on my side. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and feel free to join the QA Insights community. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. If you like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel.